Hello and welcome to the Certified Kubernetes Administrators course. My name is Mumshad Manambat and I will be your instructor for this course. So about me, I'm a solutions architect. I specialize on cloud automation and DevOps technologies. I have authored several bestseller and top rated courses on technologies like Docker, Kubernetes, and OpenShift, as well as automation technologies like Ansible, Chef, and Puppet. This course is the third installment in the series on Kubernetes and focuses on the administrator certification. Let's take a look at the structure of this course. We start with a series of lectures on various topics in Kubernetes where we simplify complex concepts using illustration, animation, and some fun analogies. We have optional quizzes that test your knowledge after each lecture. We have hundreds of practice questions that will help you practice what you learned on a real live environment right in your browser. Yes, you don't need to have your own environment. We give you the required labs that are real and that can be accessed by you anywhere, anytime, and as many times as you want. The Kubernetes certification is hands-on, so the practice test will give you enough experience and practice on getting ready for it. More on this coming soon. We also have a dedicated Slack channel that you get exclusive access to where experts and other students gather to help you clear your doubts and get instant support on your queries. We will also discuss some tips and tricks throughout this course to help you crack the certification exam. And as always, if you have any questions, you may reach out directly to us through our Q&A section or the Slack channel. Now, this is one of the course in the series on Kubernetes and focuses on getting the Kubernetes Administrator Certification. So having a basic understanding to some of the concepts and prerequisites will help. Knowing basics of Docker and some basics of Kubernetes itself, such as pods, deployments, and services, and having a good understanding of the YAML language, setting up a basic lab environment using VirtualBox can all help in this journey. We do discuss setting up a Kubernetes cluster in detail in this course, and we also have online labs and practice tests for a lot of these concepts. But if you're an absolute beginner, I highly recommend taking the Kubernetes for the Absolute Beginners course first, which is a short, quick introduction to some of the basic concepts. Let us now look at the course objectives. The objectives of this course are aligned to match the Certified Kubernetes Administrator's exam curriculum. We will discuss about details around the certification itself in one of the upcoming lectures before heading into any of these topics. However, Remember, this is not just a course to clear the certification. We discuss a number of other related topics, and the intent of this course is to get you to be good at installing, configuring, and troubleshooting a Kubernetes cluster. With the way the contents are organized in this course, we do not start the course by building a cluster from scratch. We actually do that towards the end of the course in the installation, configuration, and validation section. You will be working on pre-built live clusters throughout the earlier sections in this course. And I think that makes sense. Think of this as learning to engineer and build a car. It would be much easier if you have already driven a car, know how it works, what the wheels are for, what the transmission is for, what the brakes are for, and how to fill fuel, etc. That way, you would be able to relate those to the underlying concepts better when you learn them. And that is why I think practicing on pre-built clusters and learning the basic concepts first will help you understand how to build a cluster from scratch towards the end of this course. We start with the core concepts where we look at the various components that form the Kubernetes architecture. We then discuss some of the API primitives. Here, we mostly recap what we learned in the beginner's course about pods, replica sets, deployments, namespaces, etc. We then look at services and other network primitives. In the next section, we look at scheduling. We start with labels and selectors, followed by daemon sets and how resource limits can affect pod placements. We look at ways of manually scheduling a pod and configuring multiple schedulers and how to view the scheduler events. In the logging and monitoring section, we look at different ways of monitoring and logging the cluster of components as well as applications hosted on the cluster. In the application lifecycle management section, we look at rolling updates and rollbacks, 
and various ways of configuring applications, scaling applications, and the primitives necessary to create a self-healing application. In the cluster maintenance section, we look at the different options available to take down a node in the cluster for maintenance purposes. We then look at how software releases are organized in Kubernetes, followed by the cluster upgrade process. You will perform an upgrade to a live cluster yourself in the practice test without taking down the application. And finally, we look at the different backup and restore methodologies. We then move to security. We start by looking at different ways of authenticating into the Kubernetes cluster. We take a good look at TLS certificates. We start all the way from the absolute basics of TLS certificates into how exactly a cluster can be secured with these. So there are many practice exercises around that. You will be asked to troubleshoot and fix issues related to certificates, which I believe will give you confidence in working with certificates. We look at the new certificates API. We then look at role-based access controls and attribute-based access controls for authorization. We then look at network policies and security contexts. In the networking section, we start with some optional networking prerequisite lectures. This will help you understand and troubleshoot networking in Kubernetes in depth. So we start by understanding the basics of networking in Linux, basics of switching and routing, and birth networks in a Linux system. We try and understand the basics of DNS, what core DNS is. We then look at network namespaces and then relate those concepts to networking in Docker. We then start with networking in a Kubernetes cluster. We look at CNI and what they are. We look at one of the CNI networks in depth and how it functions. We look at how service networking works under the hoods. We then look at DNS in Kubernetes cluster. And finally, ingress networking. And of course, this section is filled with practice exercises where you will practice viewing and gathering network information from a cluster, implementing network configurations, and troubleshooting network-related issues in a cluster. We then look at designing, installing, configuring, and validating a Kubernetes cluster from scratch. We use Kelsey Hightower's Kubernetes the hard way as the basis for this, but we deploy the cluster on our local machine using VirtualBox and Vagrant. We understand how a high availability cluster works and how an HCD cluster works and the best practices in deploying an HA cluster. We look at two ways of bootstrapping a worker node, one the usual way and the other using the TLS bootstrap approach. We finally perform end-to-end -end tests on the cluster we deployed using the Kubernetes testing infrastructure. With all of this, you should have gained enough knowledge on how the various components work together in a Kubernetes cluster. So troubleshooting piece should come to you naturally. We look at some techniques that can be followed while troubleshooting a cluster and applications running on them. Again, we have a number of practice tests where we give you a broken cluster and you troubleshoot and fix them. Well, that's a lot and we plan to add more relevant topics to this list going forward. Finally, a word about practice tests. The Kubernetes certification exam is a practical hands-on exam. So it is very important to practice what you learn, which is why we have built a custom solution that will give you access to a real Kubernetes environment right in your browser, along with a quiz portal that provides fun and challenging problems for you to solve. You're required to gain a set of different skills working with Kubernetes, such as how to look for information, how to troubleshoot issues, that is why we have questions where you will be asked to find information within an environment. You will also be asked to perform configuration tasks where you will be required to configure and deploy applications and services on the cluster. We will test your work and provide feedback instantly. We will occasionally make changes to the environment or break stuff and ask you to troubleshoot and fix them. These are common issues that one would face while working with Kubernetes and these exercises will help you troubleshoot and fix issues quickly. When you see an error message, you should be able to understand what that means and where to look for information related to that error message and how to fix it. One of the major challenges in a practical test like the one in the Kubernetes certification is time. Even simple issues like a typo or an indentation error in a YAML file can take a beginner hours to fix. This is why we have hundreds of such exercises in this course that will make you an expert and give you enough practice to help you clear the exam. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for enrolling, and I'll see you in class.